I don't like to call myself as an architect because I feel like it's just the labels that we give, and we, I feel like we are so much more than that. Like I decided to take a path which is which makes more, much more sense. Like I feel as designers, we are anyway harming so much when construction when we talk about construction. Like construction is so much of energy consuming field in itself that I started researching more on natural construction, and that's what I'm practicing currently. I mean, like there's so much to learn. And the best part is that there's no, there's no thumb rule or there's no uh, standard an- answer to anything. It's everyday experiment. Every day I'm learning something new from the artist. Ramdas, so. is basically like, as the name suggests, it's basically ramming of the soil, ramming earth. So it's a very traditional technique, and when you go back, like it has been practicing since many years now. Also, a part of Great Wall of China is built with ram dirt. A lot of uh, palaces in Ladakh is built with uh, ram dirt. Also, a lot of old houses that you see in Bhutan and a lot of other places. So traditionally, uh, people were using ram dirt because it was one of the simplest way. Like, you just have to get the form work done and you have to ram it. Earlier, people did not even use cement or lime or any stabilization. They just took the soil from their land and they started ramming. The ram dirt, like whatever you're pouring in that form work, the earth, that you have to compress it. You have to compress it to a point where it gets enough strength. So to keep that wall in place, to keep that mud in place, you need shuttering. That shuttering could be with plywood or with metal or any, like earlier people used to use wood. And it was like not a design shuttering, it was just the planks that they had and then they like kept it in place whatever is the like the shape of your wall or the structure that you're building you just put a a plywood or a metal sheet and keep make the wall in place so that when you put the earth in and you ram it it takes that much of strength like it should withstand the ramming strength Uh, this is my first project apart like from the south region this is the first project that i'm doing in north uh, what is different in this project is uh, the process that we are adapting here. First thing that it's a load bearing structure. So there are no columns here. We don't have any RCC columns. The entire structure is, the load is going on the rammed earth walls. And other thing is that we are stabilizing it with lime. Uh, and also like, I'm also very glad that the clients are so much conscious about not using cement to the maximum level. So, so here the good part is that we are using all the soil from the land itself. We are not putting any sand from the river. We are not using any river sand or M sand. We are not using any cement. Initially, we start any earth construction with a soil test. We can do it manually, uh, which is a jar test. We put a handful of soil in a jar and then let it sit for like three, four days. And then you get, you see the demarcations from uh, sand, silt and clay. And that's how you get a fair understanding of how much clay content or silt is present in your soil. And then for a better analysis, we give it in the laboratory for testing. So that we get a percentage, clear cut percentage of how much composition is there. So for rammed earth construction, we would generally, uh, favorable condition would be to have 20 to 30 percent of clay. So since we are uh, like, we were not short on clay, so we did not add any extra clay which was available on site. And instead of stabilizing it with cement, we stabilized it with lime. And there was no need to add any more uh, sand to it because we had enough sand. Uh, and the other part was to add a little bit of gravel. Uh, which was also going to help in the like the strength of the wall. So that is the initial process when we do the soil test and we come up with this mix which is you decide how much lime you want to add depending on the clay co- composition. And here we decided to go for 12% of lime. So after doing a couple of tests and doing samples, came to this uh, pro- uh, like proportion of all the materials that we are going to use. We uh, do like three rounds of dry mix where we put all the sand, the gravel and the lime and then we mix it without any water and all the mixing is done by hand because we want to control how much uh, water we are adding to it and also it, it has to be a homogeneous mixture 
and after that you add a little bit of water so even the quantity of water is like very intuitive just by mixing the soil and like initially we add a bucket of water to see how the mix is and it should not be too watery it should just make a ball in your hand and there are some initial tests that we do like after making the ball you drop it from two feet height and it should evenly spread out and also the mix should be just moist it should not be too dry or too wet that's how you do on field testing for the mix so when putting the dry mix we make sure that the level is 12 cm but you can also change like that depends on the uh, compressibility of the soil and also if you want some patterns it could vary but as a general rule it's like 12 to 15 cm is a dry mix and then you keep ramming and up for about 5 to 8 minutes you ram and then you get this uh, metallic sound once it is rammed and compacted well that's when you know that you have to stop anyone can do it it's so much easy like once a mix and everything is sorted out it's so much easy to do it by yourself and also in a way it's nicer that it's labor intensive because there are so many hands gone in building just one wall and all the all the money that you've put you have put in it's all going to the labors and it's not going to some companies where you're like having fancy machines or you know fancy materials from outside so in a way the labor intensive work is good when you see where the money is distributed it is very good for insulation like it is compressed it is so much compressed that for the out like the heat to penetrate in it would take a lot of time and probably it would not even reach the inner surface so the inner temperature is always pleasant so that way it's very like it's it's good because then you don't need an air conditioner or a cooler for that matter and also since we're adding lime it is also uh, like uh, termite resistant and uh, fungus resistant so that also is an added benefit it's also fire resistant because it's so much compressed <clears throat> the fire, like it wouldn't catch fire easily if you want to demolish the structure it's all going to go in the land again there's no toxicity in this wall for rammed earth walls it's perfect when you keep it exposed uh, that's also one of the added benefit that once you make the wall you don't have to do anything to it like <clears throat> you can just leave it without any paint or without doing any plaster and that's the beauty of it because you see each layer rammed and you see the patterns and that's why a lot of people also like like to keep it exposed to see the beauty of earth and also like if you add some pigments to it you can have some colorful bands going through so that is the whole aesthetics of rammed earth Uh, for any earth construction, it's more than 100 years. They can reach me on my email address, ashunij at gmail.com. That's my email ID.